Hi, I'm Lynn Langett. In this screencast, we're going to take a look at using one of the parts of the Google Cloud. It's going to be a developer-focused screencast. In particular, we're going to look at using the Go language with Google App Engine. Here's a little bit about me. You may note that I'm a Google developer expert for the cloud platform. So there's three parts to this. We're going to get a brief look at Google App Engine, by no means comprehensive. Um, just so if you've not seen it before, you're not very familiar, you can see what the service is. Then we're going to, again, have a brief look at the Go language. This is a complete programming language, and it's not my uh, objective in the screencast to teach you everything about the Go language. Rather, I want to focus on getting up and running on Google App Engine with the Go language and kind of pique your curiosity. And so uh, on the bottom left, that's going to really be the focus. And I'll take you th through the steps of setting up the Go language on your machine, setting up an editor, and then um, downloading the SDK for the App Engine, and getting a local development environment, and then deploying a Hello World all the way up through the cloud. So basically get you up and running quickly. So in this first section, we're going to take a brief look at what is Google App Engine. So Google App Engine, in a nutshell, is uh, partially managed websites or services that are hosted and run on the Google Cloud. Um, to get a perspective on this, some of you might be familiar with some of the competition as well. So that would be AWS Elastic Beanstalk, Azure, Azure Websites, uh, or Worker Roles, and then there's many others. Um, I've used Heroku, for example. So the idea is that um, the, the management is partially done so that you as a developer can focus on building out the implementation you need. And one thing that's really interesting about Google App Engine is the automatic scalability versus some of the competition. So it's one of the reasons I use it. Another reason that I use App Engine for some of my projects is because of uh, all the uh, services that are included as part of App Engine. So uh, in addition to the scaling, as I already mentioned, you have things like Memcache, you have some good developer tooling support, you have queues, um, you have a lot of third-party frameworks and extensions that sit on top of it. Also, you have access to all the other Google APIs, the data APIs, and uh, all kinds of services. But uh, these are the core parts of App Engine itself. So let's jump over and take a look at how you would get started with App Engine um, when you're going to do a project with the Go language. So a good URL to start at is cloud.google.com. Uh, and here you will see that they have the listing of all the products on the cloud platform. So if you're new to this, you can just click on products and you can see a listing of the compute products, the storage products, and big data. There's also, of course, access to some of the other Google APIs, things like YouTube and G Plus and that kind of stuff. So inside of App Engine, you can see, again, a listing of the features, some case studies, people like the Khan Academy use it, pricing, we have a very generous free tier. And here we get down to what we are interested in, how to get up and running. So you can uh, try it out here, or you can pick your particular language. Now, I've done most of my development in Java. I've done some in Python. And just for fun today, I wanted to show you how it works in Go. So if I click on Try App Engine, you can see the document takes me right into the documentation and uh, this is the little gopher for Go. And it takes you all the way over to the tutorial. And I'm basically going to be taking you through the steps after I get the Go language set up and after I get my, uh, my IDE set up. So in this next section, we're going to take a look at the Go language, which is a language that has been authored by Google. I had uh, some fun this last weekend. I went to the Go Boot Camp, which inspired me to make this screencast. And I'm going to include some of those references because just like learning any new computer language, this is not something you're going to pick up from an hour screencast. You're going to have to invest a bit more time. So to that end, why would you want to do that? The things I liked about Go is um, it was, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, designed in a way that you wrote, as it says, simple or minimal syntax. It wasn't, you know, super verbose. Of course, it has the GC built in. The interface system is interesting. I'm still trying to, to, to understand it, basically. Um, the reason that I was interested in learning about Go was the concurrency support, um, which uh, I'll probably do another screencast on. If you guys are really interested, I'll, I'll share it with you. I'm, I'm going to work on learning it myself. Um, and I really do agree. It seems kind of fun to write. So I thought that I would share what I, what I learned with you. So it's called the Go Language Tour. And there are 74 practice exercises and there's no setup you can run in your browser. So to that end, I'm actually going to take you over there and show you a couple things in the Go language to get us started. And you can see here's the, here's the uh, uh, table of contacts. And if you go here, you can go inside of here and run. And then, of course, you can just put anything you want in here. And there are some things uh, that are, are neat about this little mini editor. I turned on uh, line numbers, and I also turned on syn syntax hiding, highlighting, which is off by default. I just think this is uh, really handy. I, we got through about half of these. So for example, here's a for loop, um, because everybody needs to know how for loop works. And you can just run. So uh, as you're spending some time learning the language, I find this to be useful. I haven't got through the whole thing yet but I will definitely go through it because you get into some of the more um, esoteric features of the languages, um, the language as in uh, interfaces and, and uh, Go routines and things like that. So after you've tried out the Go language a little bit, you may want to, um, through that browser, you may want to set it up on your machine and, uh, and try it out on your machine. So to do that, you have to do a couple of steps and I have URLs at the last slide of this presentation. You need to download the Go Language SDK. Um, I've chosen Sublime as my uh, editor. Uh, I just use Sublime for a lot of other things, and it conveniently has an add-in for the Go Language that I found on GitHub. And then you uh, just verify the setup after you install Go, and then you install the plugin into Sublime. So I'm going to show you what the Sublime environment looks like, uh, and there are many other editors. This is just the one that I happen to use. So uh, again, to get started, you just download Go from golang.org, and you pick your, your distribution for your particular operating system. It, it, there's an installer with it, so it's pretty easy to use. And then for Sublime, you can see on the bottom here, Go Sublime. Um, so uh, inside of Sublime, you just uh, install a package from GitHub, and I have the, the URL at the, at the end. So you just add it in. And then you'll have into your build system uh, Go Sublime, and you'll have syntax highlighting and code formatting. So you can see here's the same code that we saw in the um, browser. And to run this, uh, all I have to say is a run, go run, uh, hello world. And then I get my result. And it, uh, you know, I have syntax highlighting here. So, for example, I can say and in, in hinting. So I can say a format dot then it gives me my list of uh, functions in the format uh, library or package. So after that very quick sort of setup and introduction, now I want to get into the meat of this, which is using the Go language with Google App Engine. So to set up for Go and Google App Engine development, you need to download the Google Cloud SDK for Google App Engine for Go language. And this was built on Python originally, so you need to have Python 2.7 or greater on your machine. And then you need to set up a test project. I have the old console there. The Google App Engine console is being updated to a more modern um, user interface. Um, but it looks pretty similar. So it's just a container for a project. The Google Cloud SDK includes a local environment so you can actually run and test your, uh, your website locally be before you send it to the uh, actual production environment. So to get started, you just can follow the tutorial. So go in to the introduction. Uh, there's a little video you can watch. And to set up the development environment here, um, it, it tells you how to set this up. So you know, have Python, and then download the App Engine SDK. And you're going to use two commands from uh, the Go App tool in the SDK. You're going to use Go App Serve, which is going to run your local development server and Go App Deploy for uploading to App Engine. And this is going to be in the Go underscore App Engine directory of the zip archive. So after you've got your environment set up, then the first thing that you want to do is you want to set a path variable. 
um, and then you want to go to the next step. So you set up this path variable in your terminal and then you create your HTTP handler in a directory called my app. And that's just the code that was on the slide there. So you've got the two libraries, you've got the init, and then the handler, which returns out hello world. And then as I was saying, you need to do the app.yaml file. So the app.yaml, as it says, tells the app engine service which runtime to use and which URL should be handled. So hello world, version one, go, go one, there's the handler, and go app. And then this is really important. The directory structure has to look like this. And then what you want to do is you want to run this command, go app, serve. If you're in the directory where this is, you don't have to say my app, as it says right there. And then basically you can see how it looks on the uh, uh, local environment. So what I did in the interest of time is I just set this up and I'll show you what it looks like. So here's my Go app engine and I just unzipped it and then inside of it I made this my app with app.yaml and my hello go and there's that in sublime and the app.yaml just looks like that so you just need pretty simple those two files you set the path and then you just switch into the directory where your app is or your YAML file is actually. And then you say go app serve. So serve this up locally. And then it'll show you that it is starting the local admin server right here. And then uh, your particular app is being run on 8080. There's the local admin server. And there's your application. Now, if you're working on it, you can update and update right here. And then you can see the update. So super simple. I almost forgot to show you how to deploy your app into production because it's really easy and I literally almost forgot about it. So let me show you here. So on the uploading your application section of the documentation you can see that you have the URL to the um, administration console for App Engine and you have to be signed in with your account and you have to create an application. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. And uh, then once you create your application you have to edit your app.yaml file. So let me go through those steps. So uh, here we are on uh, cloud.google.com products and you just go to your console and I'm signed in with my, my account. And if you needed to make a new project, you just click create project. Now I have a project that I've already made. All you do is you put the name in for the project. And inside the project, you just pick up the project ID, which is right here, not the number, the ID. And uh, then you change the value of application from hello world to your app ID. So that's right here in your app.yaml file. Move that over so you can see it. And then save it. So then you just run the command go app deploy my app. And here you can see in my terminal window I did a go app deploy once I was in the right directory. And uh, what I had to do is I had to enter my Gmail and then I had to enter my password and then it just shows the progress of copying up those two files and it shows me where this thing is deployed to. So now to verify that in my console, I just go to um, my project ID here and I go into it and I see that now if I go into App Engine I have uh, version one and I can actually go and see and there's hello universe. So because sometimes people uh, are a little bit confused about the feature um, releases with, with Google Cloud in general, I made this slide for another series I did. How it relates to the Go language is 
um, the features become available in Go as the team adds support for this language. They start in Python, then add Java, and then PHP and Go. So always check the features. The core features in App Engine are available in Go, but um, just always check in the documentation. And then there's preview, experimental, and third party provided. So always verify for the particular feature you want to use for App Engine that it's available in Go if you want to program in Go. So to learn more, here's some um, references for the Go language. Um, here's an exercise we did in, in the class, which was fun, which was implementation of word count. In addition to the work that I do for education around big data and cloud, some of you might know that I have a nonprofit where we have free and open source courseware and teacher training materials available for you to use with kids ages 10 and up. Our core language is uh, Java, and what you see here is a customization of Eclipse that is part of our courseware or JAR file. So I'm Lynn Langett, and for more about big data and cloud, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let me know in the comments section what you'd like me to share, what you'd find to be useful. So have a terrific day and keep learning.